From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over three decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. Hello, welcome back. Our guest today is townhall.com senior columnist, Kurt Schlichter. Welcome, Kurt. Thank you. Issue one, to be or not to be? I'll be proud to vote to advance this nomination tomorrow. I disagree with Senator Grassley's statement that there was no hint of misconduct. Republicans and Democrats split along party lines late this week following the FBI's delivery of a follow-up background investigation into Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Republicans say the investigative report offers no corroboration for multiple sexual assault claims made against Kavanaugh. Thus, the GOP says, Kavanaugh should be confirmed. Democrats disagree. They say the report is inadequate in reach and that Kavanaugh should not yet receive a vote. Still, a vote is expected Saturday. And we should caveat that as we are taping right now, the confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh is expected, probably 51 to 49, but it hasn't yet happened, that vote. So on that note, Pat Buchanan, should a vote now take place? Is this the right decision? Look, Guy, the great citadel of American liberalism has just fallen after a 50-year struggle that goes back to the Warren Court and Nixon's attempt to put Hainsworth and Carswell on the court. I think there's a tremendous victory for the party. It is a victory for conservatism and republicanism. It is a tremendous victory for Donald Trump. And I'll tell you, it is a great victory for Mitch McConnell, who held up Merrick Garland for a year, kept him off the court, put Gorsuch on and now Brett Kavanaugh on. I think at the end of this battle, the Republicans, because of the last two weeks, are more united, energized, victorious, looking to the new elections coming up, and the Democrats are embittered and divided. Frankly, the Democrats played dirty at the end of the game, and they got beaten badly. Well, not surprisingly, I see it entirely different than Pat does. <laughs> uh, first of all, history will put this uh, nomination in the context it deserves, which is a seat that is ill-gotten, that was achieved by changing the rules, by holding a uh, phony uh, FBI uh, uh, investigation and basically jamming through in, in, in an inordinately brief amount of time a person who was extremely flawed to sit on the court for the next four decades ma passing moral judgment on other people. And having said that, he's going to be on the court. What are the impact on the midterms? I think women in particular mm. Suburban women in yep. particular are the decisive, are going to be the decisive fact in the midterm elections, and they are super energized about the way this has turned out. And then lastly, the impact on the court itself. Uh, going forward, the court now looks as partisan and politicized as the other branches of government. It's lost a great deal of credibility. I only hope that the Brett Kavanaugh that shows up is the Brett Kavanaugh that Susan Collins imagines he is, and that he will not be the partisan hack that he displayed himself as during the hearing. Cut. Look, this is, uh, for hardcore conservatives like me, this is exactly what we were hoping for, to get a hardcore conservative on there, but moreover to fight for him, to fight through the borking, to fight through what happened with Clarence Thomas, to fight through the nonsense. They slandered this guy, they dragged his name through the mud, but he held firm, President Trump held firm, and cocaine Mitch held firm. <laughs> this is, I mean, here's how nuts it is. I'm getting conservatives calling me up going, Kurt, I love Lindsey Graham. But, but what, <laughs> what, what about Eleanor's point, though, that this is going to be a mobilizing force for those women voters, suburban, who are now and as excited about it as you are for the different reason? Uh, well, I don't think it's a different reason. I think they're going to be excited about it because every suburban woman has a husband. Every suburban woman has a brother. Every suburban woman has a son so out there. So you think it'll help? Oh, I think it's definitely okay. going to help. Yeah. Well, Kurt and I are on opposite sides as far as the political ideology is concerned, but he's got a point when he says that, uh, that uh, 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 many Many women uh, who uh, uh, are, on the one hand, uh, support the Me Too movement, on the other hand, are concerned about the the, uh, uh, the presumption of guilt that seemed to be hovering over the whole Kavanaugh affair. Uh, I frankly think this is a big victory for Mitch McConnell, certainly, because uh, it shows that his dirty trick of uh, holding up Merrick Garland uh, has yeah, paid off. it's a big off. victory for him. He's yeah. probably the most unpopular politician in the country. Yeah. If you want but him to be the with, face of the Republican uh, Party, whom, that's yeah, not good at the electoral box. With the great Mitch McConnell unpopular? 
today. I mean, this was a tremendous victory, tremendous victory for this guy. Look, the Democratic Party was always energized. That's why we thought we're going to lose the House and we may lose the Senate. Now the Republicans are energized, but look at the look at the Democrats, representative of them, I believe, Eleanor. Take a look at those hostile, hate-filled people in the Senate and the Congress of the United States. Yeah, Democrats are known for that. Yeah, for getting, <laughs> yeah. getting in everybody's uh, face. Liberal, liberal, liberals are, are known for backlash I guess, and I guess, all I guess, I, guess I wear rose-colored glasses when I watch TV because I didn't see that. I thought it was it was a, a, a body of, of senators trying to advocate for a woman who had brought serious charges. I mean, I think there are lots of reasons to be opposed to Brett Kavanaugh that are have nothing to do with the allegations that were brought. His right. embrace mm -hmm. of executive power, which should make him excuse himself or recuse himself if a, uh, a, a, a suit reaches the court about Robert Mueller versus Donald Trump. Let's, let's do a little, on that note of the actual judicial impact here, let's have a little round room. And Pat, do you have, no, you know, on foreign policy, obviously you're sort of against right. interventionism. Do you have some concern that this Kavanaugh's, you know, preference towards executive power might and bolden future presidents to be uh, no know. I don't I really don't I'll tell you and I'll, and I'll tell you the the thing is too you've got two octogenarians on the Supreme Court still Breyer's 80 years old and uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg your friend is 107 and they're both gonna hang on until they're <laughs> a lot older than you are I, 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 I pray for their good health yeah, exactly. right. and the public conservatives are energized and and praying, but I think the other way for those two right, good Clarence. trustees. <laughs> you know, I, I want to make one. I'm sorry. Well, one one quick point. You know, uh, something something Democrats have to have to be cautious about is that uh, the polling for white males uh, shot up as far as their approval of Kavanaugh here mm. in the last couple of weeks, which appears to be a direct backlash. Uh, of what I was talking about this is so-called so presumption of guilt at the cloud. What of, does it mean for the court? White though? male victim, victimization. Yeah. Uh, the core is this is off year election. It's already a base election. It's going to be be right. two fired up bases mm -hmm. going. At each yeah, other. It's, it's, base, exactly. it's base mobilization, but uh, what Trump is doing now is he's saying, white men, be afraid, be very afraid. Hordes of women are going to come out and, and bring these very illegal you know, accusations he's against so you. He's so and, it's so hard for Excuse me, if Brett Kavanaugh is vulnerable, everybody is vulnerable. That's his message. It's you know, ridiculous. Right. Look, wait a minute. You just saw, I mean, now you saw that guy, whatever you think, and, and people believe the woman was, Miss Ford was was, you know, compelling. That's but he was compelling, too. What had been done to this guy, who's a distinguished jurist, he gets ripped to bits. That is what energized folks. They're saying, what are they right. doing to this right. guy based on Let no corroboration? What does that this score? mean for the balance of the judicial rulings that are to come? Is Roe v. Wade gone? Do you think is that going to be overturned? I don't think it's going to be overturned until we get six three. I think that we are going to see uh, them standing up for the First Amendment, the right to free speech, the right to practice our religion as we see fit, and the Second Amendment. And the finally, the Second Amendment, the founders' vision of decentralized uh, armed citizenry is going to be a reality. I'll I tell can't you what's wait. What's in trouble yeah. is right. affirmative action is going yep. to be in trouble. Okay. Affirmative action is already dead. Now. <laughs> it's been dead for a long time, really. Right. The Supreme Court is out of kilter with America. The 52 senators who supported Kavanaugh's confirmation represent many millions fewer people than the people who didn't vote. I mean, these two senators from all these small states who who, you, what who about get Roe these votes. I, I think Roe v. Wade eventually will will, wonder, will be gone, but in the meantime, they're gonna, there are lots of cases being teed up. They're going to further restrict access to uh, abortion. Okay. Now, what but, good is the right if you have no access to it? But you know, the Warren mm, Court quickly. was out of touch with the country. The liberal Supreme Court has never been in touch with the country. That's why Republicans have used it as an issue, saying, get it in concert with the, with the right. conservative so country. The well, come up and will be coming for this court that came to the right. 50 All right. years right. from now. We will return to this issue. We will return, I'm sure. Issue two, the eagle and the dragon. I have a great relationship with the president of China, President Xi, but it's got to be a two-way street. Nice words, but America isn't getting along with the Chinese nation of 1.4 billion people. In 2018, the U.S. and China are locked in a trade war characterized by hundreds of billions of dollars in tariffs. And with China's GDP now over $12 trillion a year, and U.S. GDP at over $19 trillion a year. Neither side seems willing to back down. Also at contention, an escalating struggle over the South China Sea. Just last weekend, a U.S. Navy destroyer had to alter course 
after being confronted by a Chinese warship. That showdown reflects China's claim of ownership over vast swathes of water that the U.S. says belongs to no one nation. Eleanor, how should the United States approach China now with these issues? Well, I mean, I, I give the president credit for calling out the, uh, China on, on trade, on the aggression in, in, in the South China Sea, and uh, I guess they're, they're increasing uh, militarization, if you will. For the past, I don't know how many decades, the Republicans have basically appeased China. I mean, George H.W. Bush was famous for that. He was a former envoy to China. He really believed if you opened up trade with China, they would... They would, mm -hmm. they would become like us and we'd all right. be friends. But this president is suspect because he's charging China also with things I don't believe he has any evidence for, that they're somehow meddling in our electoral process worse than Russia. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some political uh, impetus behind uh, Vice President Pence's you big know, speech Tom, this week assailing China. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about it. If Eleanor's correct, uh, look, look, the China trade agreement, MFN for China, we used to fight that every year. Don't feed this tiger. If it gets too large, you're going to find out what it is. It's exactly what the foolish Republican free traders did. It's why Trump is president of the United States. I agree with him to do battle on the trade issues with the Chinese. But in the South China Sea, those aren't our islands, whosoever they are. If they're the Philippines, they're not standing up for them. Vietnam is not standing up for them. Why are we in there confronting them militarily? I agree with the battle over trade, but we don't want a second Cold War, and I don't believe we ought to have a policy of containment of China. Let her neighbors do that job. Okay, Clarence. Well, I think Pat makes a good point as far as the uh, containment uh, uh, as opposed to uh, a uh, military approach to that uh, region. Uh, but at the same time, I, I don't think President Trump really knows how to deal with China. He's <laughs> kind of kind of been uh, uh, bouncing around trying to uh, take a, firm, a more firm position, which is uh, uh, perfectly uh, correct, but arguing with China is like arguing with, with your landlord. Uh, uh, we owe China a lot of money, if you will, insofar as the, the trillions they've been uh, helping to subsidize us by uh, buying our bonds over the years, while at the same time, uh, as Pat would say, taking our jobs, etc., but providing us with uh, uh, cheaper goods for Walmart, etc. So you think we're et interwoven? So yeah, yeah, we we really are, and uh, so there's only so much grandstanding you can do. But 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 China too cannot bully us as far as as our trade relations go. Kurt, do you think we're heading towards conflict in the South China Sea? Well, I think look, we're 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 definitely dealing with a peer competitor. China is uh, increasing its military power both in numbers and technology. It's not quite a fifth generation fighters yet, but it's getting better. Uh, our people are better trained, but our people are exhausted. Our equipment is wearing out, and you've seen the problems with seamanship. We've had two major collisions mm -hmm. in, this, uh, in, in that general region, uh, in the Seventh Fleet area, in the last couple of years. We could very well be at war with China. Oh, and, you know, please. And, 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 <laughs> why? Just, just, why? Just, because yeah, somebody yeah. might miscalculate out. some idiot, like that captain of that Chinese ship, could go in and ram an American ship, and somebody's going to start firing. I'm worried about that. I, well, I, I let know? American by, soldiers... By accident, you mean, by, as opposed uh, to a... a if process. not by accident, by miscalculation. What, what vital, we need to stop... There is no vital interest. Right, there's we, no vital interest. You don't go to war with a country right, the size we, of China. Yeah, but we do that if they insane. shoot at you yeah, first. No, yeah. the, well, here, here's, the, here's the problem. What if they shoot at you, Pat? Well, what are you doing, you know, you know they're getting within t six miles of their stinky little islands? <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, well, it's our yeah. ocean. Yeah. Yeah. It's not everybody's China. ocean. The South China Sea. <laughs> let the our... Vietnamese deal with them. Let the Indonesians yeah. deal with them. Let the Philippines deal with them. It reminds me with Iraq. Uh, there was a saying that said, what is our oil doing under their sand? <laughs> <laughs> All right. But <laughs> where is Cito when we need them? Clarence, is, is there a... Yeah, yeah, stinky little right. islands <laughs> doing in our ocean. So, <laughs> so, look, Americans need, uh, and, and all countries need free access to the sea. That has been a basic principle right. of the United States okay. for centuries. Right. That is... Is, uh, they, we are a seagoing nation. What, but they have not Pat, interfered gonna, with it. Well, they, they wait, 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 Eleanor, with Eleanor. the dictator. Speak for, speak for Pat. What if they came over here and in they the came in the ocean around here? They're going to go from Mexico. Wait, 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 wait. I want to ask you a question here. Obviously, the major exports of the United States to China are high tech goods, uh, services to a degree, mm -hmm. China's low cost goods. Do you mm -hmm. think in that regard, because we can offset with Vietnam, clearly the Trump administration thinks that we are winning the trade war? <laughs> Well, uh, winning, losing a tr trade war, that's a, 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 a hefty uh, question that, that depends on your perspective. Fr mm -hmm. Frankly, uh, uh, China, well, our 
trade is so interwoven, especially on high-tech goods, right. that uh, you think uh, it's a ferret or parrot? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very hard to say one side has one Tom, when you, both sides exactly are going. You're exactly right, though. Look, let's suppose you put a hundred percent tariff on all Chinese goods coming into the country. Mm -hmm. We would get rid of almost all the Chinese imports, but the Chinese Im the Chinese manufacturing would move to Indonesia, would move to you know Southeast Asia, all the others. They would get our markets unless we protected our entire market from the world. There's a real problem yeah. where the where the manufacturing goes if it moves out of China. I'll tell yep. you what wor worries me is while we're debating about well the, the tariffs and all of that, China with uh, its enormous resources is in, in Africa, it's in yep. South America, they're offering up uh, expertise, funds, they're building cities. Where did they cities, get all that money? Uh, <laughs> from us, <laughs> right. <laughs> Very enterprising country. And it is an interesting challenge. David Cameron, former British Prime Minister, now works for the Asian Investment and Infrastructure Bank, and so in this idea of the South China Sea, Pat's point, I'm, I'm normally against Pat on this, but the, there is the, you know, it could be America alone, right? Well, it, it could be. Look, there, it, there is a, a globalist uh, uh, caste that supports the kind of uh, uh, free trade regime that we have seen cause so many problems. Mm -hmm. And it has hurt America. And low-cost goods, though, uh, for America. Low-cost <laughs> goods, that, that is true. But you know you're seeing uh, you know you're seeing people pull up in cars to, uh, in front of carrier plants in uh, Illinois saying, "Hey, all your jobs are going to Shanghai." But, you Adios, know, learn coding. Let me tell you, <laughs> no Trump, thanks. Trump is going to have a serious problem at the end of this year. The merchandise trade deficit, the overall trade deficits in goods with China is going to be a record, and with the world, it's going to be a record. As of last month, it was running at it's, the rate of something like nine hundred billion well, a year. Okay. It's, all, it's, it's all gone up, and despite all of his braggadocia about how he's going to change things mm -hmm. by the by the metric he has set things are worse uh, yes. however some of these tariffs are going to hit the uh, uh, US consumers right at Christmas time when they discover that some some of the, these uh, gifts we're accustomed to are going to be more expensive than yeah, but they that's were too late so they need to delayed. do it before November 6 well, that, that's, that's not, that's not going to happen but they're going to be PO okay. by New Year's okay, <laughs> all right. okay on that note when we come back a new NAFTA and some other stuff When I was a freshman in college, um, I lost my brother Brian to suicide. Brian had been a, a very successful college student himself who was president of an acapella group, sports editor of a newspaper, 3.8 GPA at an Ivy League university. Brian eventually went and sought help in his senior year. The hopelessness and the helplessness that accompanies depression had, um, had gotten to him and had gotten to him so strong. Um, that just about a year later, in my freshman year of college, Brian died by suicide. The McLaughlin Group is brought to you in part by Eric.org. With gridlock in Washington, states are stepping in to mandate paid sick and family leave policies creating a compliance nightmare for companies with a nationwide workforce. The ERISA Industry Committee is fighting back. Learn how we can help your company at eric.org. Issue 3, a new NAFTA. A brand new deal to terminate and replace NAFTA and the NAFTA trade agreements with an incredible new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement called USMCA. It sort of just works. MCA. President Trump this week announced a new trade deal with Canada and Mexico. The not-so-originally-titled U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement ensures relative free trade will continue between the three nations. But what does the deal entail? Well. It means more coil manufacturing jobs will have to pay at least $16 an hour. The deal also requires most car parts to be made in North America. Other elements include new U.S. access to Canadian dairy markets and longer-term protections for intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Clarence, is this a good deal for American workers? I think it's a good deal for both sides, depending on how you look at it. But like any trade deal, it's, it's a win-win and a lose-lose in some other aspects. But for, for one thing, it's a, it's a modernization. Uh, it's, a, it's also a recognition of, 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 the, of the differences, the, the big wage gap that has uh, led to the loss of jobs here in the U.S. That $15 an hour uh, minimum uh, will help to equalize that. Uh, so it's the kind of thing But that it doesn't include health care, right? There's uh, a lot 
much far, cheaper to provide health care in Mexico. Not yet. Well, yeah, it's cheaper, for, but, but everything in Mexico, that's why, <clears> why the imbalance has happened uh, uh, that, that we're experiencing now. But I think this is a step in the right direction. Uh, USMCA, United States Marine right. Corps A. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a, it's a good agreement, and Trump has kept his word. But I do agree, it is, this is not some large, huge right. thing. It is, he, it, he continues the best aspects of the NAFTA agreement, and he, it helps with the autos, the dairies get into, products get in there. They only 3% though, apparently. Pardon? It's only 3% of the dairy market we get. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, in other words, it's not a huge, great, big, right. you know, trans-Pacific yeah, partnership. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, with the new name, it's, it's, a, it's a branding uh, victory. Uh, and, you know, the, I, I can't complain about the, the agreement, but it's essentially what Obama had that was part of the TPP that, uh, that Trump overturned. It's, it, it's not a radical departure. But he has sold it as such, and uh, maybe his supporters will believe it. We'll see how it turns out. Okay. I think politically this is great, because Donald Trump was brought in as a reaction against unrestricted free trade in large part. We yeah. saw jobs going up to Oaxaca and, and Ho Chi Minh City and Shanghai. And American workers were saying, wait, wait who's going to stand up for us? Trump has done that. And as you can see, everybody here is going, well, yeah, it's, it's okay. You can see Chuck Schumer. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. And it's, I mean, it must be hard for him because Trump has done some that everyone pretty much agrees no, it's on. Not, it's yeah, not it's a not a big hard. change, but he has basically taken an anti-global mm -hmm. trade mm -hmm. uh, position and tweaked it a little bit and sold it well, like it's a big radical change. All right. Well, well, you're all right, right, right. you're all right, not roasting them over let, an empire. All, right, all right, all right, all right. Let, let me ask a question here. Does anyone here think this could be a template for a renegotiation of the TPP? Oh, no. I wish it was. Uh, but no, I don't I think so. Don't I think, think, so. I think, what, I think this, this has cleared the stage for the big game with the Chinese is mm. what it's done. Right. You've mm. got to settle the matter with the Canadians. Europe is coming up. Europe is coming up, but the big battle is going to be with the Chinese. But if it's battling with the Chinese, TPP would be the first thing you should do because that yep. corners, it leaves the Chinese out. But it's does anyone, us versus China. All right, does anyone here, <laughs> others versus China. I brought some little statistics out for a change. Does anyone here know the export to import ratio with Mexico and Canada? Because it's closer than I thought it was. Mexico. Surprise to the squiz. Can Canada's got <laughs> our biggest, Canada's our biggest gotten better. Yeah. Canada's yeah. closed. We, ha we have a surplus of $8 billion, $340 $340 billion export to Canada, 332 import, and Mexico $276 to $76 billion export and 339 import. So it's 339, that's a, what are you talking close to a hundred billion dollar deficit? No, about fifty, right? Sixty, seventy. Six, okay, so three three nine billion dollar deficit with a small country like that? But it's cheaper goods, right? So we well, benefit from well, but the whole point is Americans ought to make goods for Americans. But it would be higher cost t -shirt, yeah. TV. Well, t I got, we got T-shirts well, in the 50s just fine. Well, Am <laughs> <laughs> back to the 50s. Okay. Uh, Amazon is going to raise yeah. the minimum wage to $15. If American companies are willing to pay livable wages, we can make oh, everything in this country. I don't think that's going to happen. A lot of other American companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they got the ability to do it. Well, it. well, we got low uh, unemployment now. So uh, you're going to have a greater demand for labor. So uh, so the, the, the natural minimum wage is going uh, it, it, going up. Uh, yeah, it should. The, the, that's been a problem. But well, we're starting to see some wage improvement now. We'll see what happens. Cut. Well, I know there's wage improvement. I, I have a law firm, and I am having to pay young lawyers. I used to be able to put up a sign that said, hey, lawyers want I get a line of people with briefcases out the door. Now mm -hmm. they're coming in saying, well, i got three offers. What can you do for me? Right. It's a whole different world for workers as opposed to bosses. Yeah. And I think it's about time that these young Young people experience the excitement that that, that I did it's back in the '80s when the economy was booming. Well, well, they, uh, they did. They did back in the '90s. Unfortunately, but they lost it when the economy crashed. Wages for lawyers are not really the big problem, right. though. Yeah. <laughs> it is for lawyers when they have well, a two hundred fifty thousand dollar uh, student a, debt. If we have a buyer's market for lawyers, that's the worst. News <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what we learned this week? Do you know I how agree. much we're paying on the nat the national debt now? The interest on the national debt. It's uh, uh, overtaking billion? what we spend on the military. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a big That's problem. Right. It's not entitlement th reform. We need entitlement no, reform. I'll tell you, you get interest well. up to 5 or 6% like yeah. it used to be, and you're talking to 
def what a debt of about twenty-one trillion dollars. You're talking over a trillion dollars in interest. But, but what, uh, I remind you, President Trump's budget uh, right. bumped bump that up a trillion dollars. I right. mean, just, I mean, forget about being a deficit. Well, you got hawk a tax either. cut, didn't you, Clarence? Who, who are the deficit hawks? <laughs> did you get a big tax I, I, cut? I'm still trying to find mine, Pat. <laughs> but, cut, but, cut, but, but what happened to the deficit hawks? Do you, you know? think the era of fiscal conservatism on either side is dead? Uh, I think I, I'm not sure it's dead, but I think it's comatose. I think there are other things that we're dealing with right now, rebuilding the military, dealing with these trade issues. And, and, and frankly, I don't think there's any appetite to going after the entitlements, which we need to do if we're going to get this under control. What happened to the president's big infrastructure plan? Oh, yeah. yeah, what happened oh, yeah. to that? That would be great. If it's we terrific. could do it. But that's more debt. That's more debt, but, yeah, 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 more debt, but stuff's got to be uh, so Where are you going to get the money for all this? You're going to have exactly. well, yeah. $1 trillion dollar money is debt cheap. in its Money is cheap right now. But it so won't be that. forever. No, it's not going to be forever. we need to build right. that. We need to rebuild our infrastructure. I are, mean, we really need to do that. All right, what do you think about, we had news today, actually, from the European Union, that they expect a Brexit deal. Uh, at some point. So now Theresa May's fortunes are slightly rising. Are we going to get a Brexit deal that's good for the British people, do you think? Round robin, yes or no? <laughs> no, I think they're going to be annoyed. You may get Boris Johnson. Well, I don't know what that is, but, you know, all right, Eleanor. It'll not be as good as what they had before they got out of Brexit. Clarence. Right. And why they announced that the same week as Kavanaugh? We haven't got time to talk about Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so many issues, so little time. Right. Anyway, on that note, we shall return forthwith with predictions and other offerings for your benefit. For more than a century, the Greater Washington Board of Trade has focused on growing our regional economy. We work every day to foster collaboration, build pipelines for skilled workers, embrace innovation, and attract investment. We must think, plan, and act as a region to better leverage our shared assets so we can continue shaping and advancing a vibrant regional economy for the next hundred years. Predictions, Patrick. In Brazil, second largest yeah. country in the hemisphere in election Sunday, Mr. Bolsonaro will come in first. He is a right winger who makes Donald Trump look like Justin Trudeau. Interesting. <laughs> Eleanor? Uh, Susan Collins' 50-minute apologia for Brett Kavanaugh on the Senate floor has guaranteed her a strong Democratic challenge in 2020 and has made her the figure on the left that Nancy Pelosi is for people on the right. Interesting. Cut. Okay, California's Rick Grinnell. He's our ambassador in Berlin, doing a great job getting the Germans to honor Iranian sanctions. He's uh, conservative, he's evangelical, and he's gay. Look at him to run as governor for governor or for senator in 2022 in California and maybe revive the California Republican Very Party. Very He's tough on Iran, that's true. <laughs> Clarence. In the wake of Kavanaugh, I think the uh, uh, Republican majority uh, is safe in the Senate of this coming uh, uh, November, and I hope I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> I, I predict that within the next few weeks, European intelligence services will announce that they have detected new Iranian terrorist plots on European soil. And here's a random fact for Pat. 17 years ago today, the US and, and Britain began military operations to remove the Taliban regime from power in Afghanistan. Today, US and NATO personnel still serve on the ground in Afghanistan, working to consolidate that nation's struggling democracy. Bye-bye. <laughs>